Hey, welcome back to Global Environment. Uh, we're still talking about ecological economics. And what we're going to start doing is bring together the ideas of models, laws of thermodynamics, and economics. We're going to put it all together, make some sense out of it. So I'm going to start drawing something for you. And it might look familiar to you if you've taken economics before. So we're going to look down here and uh, get this running. So what I'm going to do is draw a couple of boxes for you. And, and you might want to copy this down too. So we have a box here. And this box interacts with this box. Okay. This box has the households in it. Okay, and this box, which it's interacting with, we have the firms. Okay, so households here, firms here. Um, and this is the beginning of a neoclassical economic model, just to show you where we're headed. Now, as I said, they're interacting, so we have arrows here. Now, what do the households provide the firms with in economics? Well, they provide the firms with labor and capital. If you invest, they can buy tools and machinery and technology, okay? And you provide labor. Now, what do the firms give the households? They give the households goods, might be the car you buy or services maybe the haircut I need okay so you got goods and services here now um, the household if, if, if you have a job you know the firms are your could be where you work the factories you don't walk out with goods and services hopefully so something else has to have happen there's a transaction so we'll use a dash line and that's money and money goes the other way okay so this could be things like your paychecks. And money goes the other way this way. This is your expenditures. OK. So this is the basic neoclassical economic model. Um, and you, you can see, you know, it, it makes some sense. We've got a lot of important things in here. But let's, let's think about it. Let's, let's put on our thinking caps for a second. Now, the question to you is, does this model obey the second law of thermodynamics, which everything in the universe should obey? So let's look at it again. So again, we have the households. Given labor and capital to firms. They give goods and service to households. Labor and capital to firms. Goods and service to households. Labor and capital to firms. Goods and services to households. Around and around forever. If this was a machine, it would be a perpetual motion machine, which you see, it's, you see every day, right? Okay, so you're starting to understand that this does not obey the second law of thermodynamics because what does the second law say must occur? You must lose some energy as heat. Now, it sounds like I'm nitpicking, but what we're going to do in the next segment is we're going to take this original neoclassical model and we're going to try to alter it and improve it, and we're going to make an ecological um, uh, economic model that obeys the second law of thermodynamics. And when we start to include those, those laws of thermodynamics, a lot of things fall out and it starts to make more sense. So I'll leave you there and we'll come back to this in the next segment. So see you next time.